In this example, we're looking at a collision between two carts of different mass. Uh, it's a head-on collision where they're moving towards each other at different velocities. And the ask for the velocities and directions of each cart after the collision. Uh, so we know the stuff before the collision. What we don't know is what's happening after the collision. And what makes this unique is without that information, you can't solve it with momentum alone. But what does stand out is the type of collision we have, right? So a couple things we do know, right? We're going into and solving collisions. We know that an impulse or change in momentum is equal to a force times a time. And in this collision, there's no external force on the system. The system being the masses of the carts, uh, gravity's not acting on them in the direction of their motion. There's no friction. So really we have no net force which tells you that the change momentum of the system is equal to zero, which allows you to say the momentum of the system initially is equal to the momentum of the system at the end, which takes you down the rabbit hole looking at the two masses, M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial is equal to M1, V1 final, plus M2, V2 final, right? So, uh, we can look at our conservation momentum, and this is how we would set this thing up. Um, but because it's perfectly elastic, we know something else is true. We know that the change in energy of the system is equal to zero, which that kind of energy is in the form of kinetic energy. And so we can say that the kinetic energy of our system before equals the kinetic energy of the system later which means we can then break it down a little further and you get an equation that says one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half M2 V2 initial squared is equal to one half M1 V1 final squared plus one half M2 V2 final squared, right? It gets kind of hairy, but what you effectively have are two equations, right? You have equation one, and you have equation two, and we would say we have a system of equations. And in this particular problem, we'll break th some things down. Uh, we know stuff about everything before, we just don't know what's happening after. Uh, but since we have two equations, we can figure out the two unknowns, which ultimately we're trying to find these velocities at the end, those final velocities of each cart. Uh, so we're going to work through and, and go through some of the math behind this. I think it's a nice algebra exercise um, and kind of get our head around what's going on. Um, it always helps to have a good visual, too, so we know what kind of answers we're expecting. So I'm going to draw a picture, probably something I should have done before I even broke down these equations. All right, but let's look at this. we got cart one has a mass of two kilograms. Cart two has a mass of four. So I'm going to draw each cart. Here's cart cart one. And we'll put two kilograms in there. And cart two is four kilograms. Uh, maybe it makes sense to draw cart two a little bigger. If it's more massive, uh, that visual can be nice. That's cart two. Uh, we know that cart one is moving at five meters per second, right? So I'm gonna draw a nice long arrow and say five meters per second. And cart two is traveling in the same direction at two meters per second. So I'm gonna draw a smaller arrow, at two meters per second. All right, so we get this collision. Um, of a smaller mass on a bigger mass. And let's see what happens after the collision, right? So after the collision, they're gonna collide and you're gonna have this smaller mass and this bigger mass. Uh, I suspect that this bigger mass is not gonna suddenly be going left. So I'm probably gonna gain some velocity. All right, this is gonna be, since it's mass one and mass two, let's call it V2 final. Uh, and then this second mass, this smaller one, uh, even though it's going faster, I actually don't know where it's going to go. We got some final velocity of one, which could really go either way. Uh, and so hopefully our math will tell us if we get a negative answer, we would know it's left, positive, right. Uh, I don't see a way where that block on the right could end up going left. So I'm expecting a positive answer for V2 final. So that's kind of the thought process here. And we're really just trying to figure out, well, what the heck are those velocities? Uh, so let's start plugging in some numbers and clean things up. You certainly, you can go online, there's derivations and ways to solve this, but I'm gonna go through the math. I'm gonna plug in the values we know. All right, so cart one, uh, if we're gonna do momentum, this first equation, I know that it has a mass of two kilograms moving at positive five, plus cart two has a mass of four kilograms moving at positive two. That's the left side of that first equation. And then later we have a mass of two moving at some final velocity uh, of 
cart one, plus four, the mass of the second cart, and its final velocity. All right, so there's my one equation. I can clean this up. The left side, I got five times two is 10, plus eight, which is 18, is equal to two V final, or sorry, V one final, plus four V two final. So there's one equation. Uh, let's go to kinetic energy. We know that one half of two times five squared plus one half of four times two squared, there's our initial kinetic energy of our system, is equal to one half of two times V one final squared plus one half of four times V two final squared. And now let's clean that up, right? The half and the two cancel, five times five is 25. Four and two is two, two times two squared, that should give me, I believe, eight. Uh, and so I have 33 on the left side is equal to one half of two, that cancels, I have V one final squared, and four divided by two is two, V2 final squared, and there's my system. Uh, so now it's an algebra exercise. Uh, and there's a lot of ways we can do this, right? Uh, we could solve for variable, do substitution, uh, and that's probably the way I'm gonna go here. Um, I think the easiest thing here to do would be to solve the left equation in terms of either V1F or V2F, substitute it in, and then uh, solve the one equation from there. So um, let's, let's go ahead and just solve for V1 final here on the left side of the equation. Uh, I'm going to isolate it. I'm going to subtract 4v2 final. So 18 minus 4v2 final is equal to 2v1 final. Uh, and I can divide the whole thing by 2. And I end up with v1 final is equal to 9 minus 2v2 final. And I'm going to take this. And now I can substitute V1 final right in here. And when I do that, I'm gonna get a new equation. I'm gonna get 33 is equal to the quantity nine minus two V2 final, quantity squared plus two V2 final squared. And we gotta clean that up. Oh, we got a polynomial, a binomial, and we're gonna square it, we got a foil. Right? Remember, in algebra class, it really looks like this. And we've got to multiply it by itself. So we got to do that FOIL uh, from algebra class. And I'm going to clean it up here, right? So we're going to do first, outside, uh, inside, and last. So I'm going to get 33 is equal to 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times negative 2vf is negative 18 minus another uh, 18, so negative 36v2f. And then negative 2 and negative 2 is positive 4v2f squared. And I'm going to add this extra 2v2f squared over to the end, right? So this part is the polynomial multiplied out. Uh, we can clean some things up. Uh, we can get the 33, let's subtract it over to the other side, right? I can just do a little math, 81 minus 33. My mental math is a little slow, I'm overthinking it. We get 48, so I'm gonna get zero is equal to 48. Uh, we have minus 36 V2 final squared, or sorry, V2 final. And then four and two, those are like terms. So plus six V2 final squared. Hey, we got a quadratic equation here. Uh, I'm going to rearrange it just to see our A, B, and C uh, and just write it in decreasing power. So I'm going to rewrite it as 6V2 final squared minus 36V2 final plus 48. Uh, now, I think 6 goes into all that. I can divide everything by 6 if I want and clean it up. Uh, I might do that. I can plug it right in the quadratic. Uh, I'm just going to clean it up, divide the whole problem by 6, and just get V2 final squared minus 6 V2 final plus 8. Uh, that is actually factorable, but we'll double check my work. Why not use a tool when we have it? My A term becomes 1. My B term becomes negative 6. And my C term becomes 8. 
And lo and behold, we get nice whole numbers, right? We get V2 final is either four or two. V2 final is either positive four or positive two. Now these are velocities. Uh, what does that mean? Well, there's a solution to this and those are two of the possible solutions. Uh, and let's look at our situation. Well, hey, doesn't it start at two meters per second? So two meters per second can't be one of the solutions because that's what it started with which actually makes sense if we get one of those as our solutions. But that means that V2 final better be the bigger one. So I actually know that V2 final is equal to four meters per second, and it's positive, so I know it's to the right. Which means now, since I know V2 final, anytime you wanna solve a system, we can substitute that back into either equation We've already got V1 final solved for in terms of V2 final. So I'm just going to take that value and substitute it right back in here. And I'm going to evaluate what V1 final must be. Well, V1 final is going to be equal to 9 minus 2 times V2 final, which was 4. So that's 9 minus 8. So V1 final ends up becoming... positive one meter per second, right? And again, that means that V1 final is going to be one meter per second. And because it's positive, we can say to the right. So now we've solved this system. And now we know that both carts are still moving right. And we know that this final velocity at the end should be equal to one meter per second and four meter per second. All right, and if we substitute those values in, so block one's still moving to the right because we got a positive value, uh, we would find that if we substituted those final velocities into the equation on the left, that momentum after the, the uh, collision before it was 18 kilogram meters per second. And when you substitute one and four, you get two plus 16 is 18 kilogram meter per second of uh, momentum. So momentum is conserved, right? But let's look at kinetic energy. Well, before the collision, we have 33 joules of kinetic energy. And now let's add in what we have here. Well, one squared is one plus two times 16 is 32, and so we get 33 joules, and therefore kinetic energy is also conserved, right? So we know that that solution for this problem satisfies both conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy uh, as a perfectly elastic collision. So there's our solution, kind of work through all the algebra. Again, there are calculators online. Uh, if you're trying to solve problems on an AP exam, they're typically not gonna ask you to solve the whole system, but we certainly need to know that a perfectly elastic collision, we can conserve kinetic energy. And that's what's gonna allow us to actually find a solution here when it doesn't appear to give us enough information at the start of the problem. Um, so best of luck here as you start to solve these more challenging uh, problems here with momentum.